Hi, this is our CSC 420 project, and we are working on the 2018 Kaggle Human Protein Atlas Image Classification Contest. This contest asks us to identify the organelles present in a given query image. Given an input image which has four channels, green, red, blue, and yellow, our task is to assign the correct set of labels to the organelles in the green image. This problem is challenging due to several factors. First, there are 28 possible labels to assign to a single query image. Each image can contain multiple labels. Second, there is strong label imbalance inherent in the dataset, with some labels appearing less than 0.4% of the time. Lastly, there are 27 different cell types, which vary greatly. Although all three members worked on the neural network aspect of this project, John focused on the convolutional neural network, Alex focused on segmentation, and I focused on image processing. I experimented with different model architectures, including different loss functions and loss metrics, pre-training and dropout, and combining them. Although Kai Mihei recently released a paper which stated that pre-training is not necessary, we found that it seriously helped our performance. So on this slide, you can see the effect of pre-training. We can see the pre-trained network reaches higher F1 scores more quickly. We can also see the effect of dropout. Without dropout, the network overfits, as we can see in this image, where the training accuracy increases while the validation accuracy decreases. I also created a novel architecture combining traditional computer vision techniques. Before the final output layer, I concatenate the second last layer with a SIF feature descriptor computed by OpenCV. Here, we compare the results versus our best performing network. The SIF results were not as good as the best network, most likely due to fewer epochs of training. The best network is a fine tuning of a pre trained ResNet 34 architecture using additional eight image augmentations as done by my partners with dropout and traditional binary cross entropy loss. It achieved within the top 35% on the Kaggle leaderboard. To add variation to the data to improve performance, we tried individually augmenting 30% of the data with various image processing techniques that we felt were strong augmenters. The augmenters were applied to an existing Kaggle kernel with a slightly modified scan and using the image Aug open source library. Scaling zooms in and out, edge detection highlights edges, sharpening enhances edge definition. The two salt and pepper methods add black and white pixels or rectangles. The additive Gaussian noise method adds white noise, and the affine method adds various affine transformations to the image. We hypothesized that sharpening would provide the best results and additive Gaussian noise would provide poor results. Running the neural network with 30% data augmentation gave some unexpected results. The original dataset had an F1 score of 0.407, where the F1 score is a more accurate reflection of a neural network's accuracy in multi-label classification problems. As you can see, all methods performed worse than the original, but we were surprised that additive Gaussian noise and affine had the two highest F1 scores. Taking the augmenters with the top three F1 scores, we ran the neural network on a combination of them. This performed much worse than expected. Trying only the top two augmenters, we were able to see a slight improvement in the F1 score. Each explored augmentation uses a different function from the scikit segmentation library. The segmentation augmentation was believed to be useful as this would not only reduce the spatial information, which is irrelevant in this context, but also increase the dataset size as each image contained multiple cells. Our first attempt utilizes the slick algorithm, which is essentially k-means clustering performed on the spatial and color dimensions of the image. Although many cells are well contained within a superpixel, they often contain background pixels and even multiple cells, as in this case. The next explored method of segmentation was using the random walker algorithm. Since the cell's nuclei are easily segmentable with pixel intensity thresholding, the nuclei are used as seeds to grow segments on the binary image. This method grows the segments evenly, which results in an approximation of k-nearest neighbors, as seen by the decision boundary-like segmentation. Finally, our last method utilizes this watershed algorithm. Similarly as before, the nuclei and binary images are used to ensure the cells are distinct and limited to the foreground pixels. The Sobel transformation is used to contain the growing of each seed. Kaggle imposed two major constraints when running programs on their servers, space and time. The limited RAM and disk space suggested the need for image size reduction and augmentations at training time, which is problematic for computationally expensive segmentation algorithms. The maximum session time pushed us to accelerate convergence through increase of batch size and usage of only 20% of samples of the dataset per epoch. Both of these constraints also motivated the choice of a model with a limited complexity. For future work with more time, we could run the neural network on a larger dataset. We can also augment the underrepresented labels to reduce the label imbalance and find a good ratio between augmented and original data. We can also explore better architectures and loss functions. And with more computing power, we may be able to use segmentation to augment the data to train the neural network. These are some of our references. Thank you for listening.